both adults and youth peers who affirm trans and non-binary young people can have really positive effects on their mental health and can help save folks' lives. So we know from previous research that trans and non-binary young people are at elevated risk of negative mental health outcomes, things like depression, suicidal ideation, suicidal attempts. Um, and we also know from research that much of that, uh, those negative mental health outcomes come from how people are being treated, right? Being a transgender person in a transphobic society. And so what's really exciting about the results of this study is that it is data that shows that being an ally works. We absolutely recognize that a lot of folks are struggling with family members who don't understand or even reject someone's transgender or non-binary identity. This study shows that, that while parents and family members are a really important source of support, there are other adults in a young person's life who can also play a really important role. Really any adult who is working with young people, whether that's you know in a school or on a sports team or at a summer camp or you know in a medical practice or, or doing therapy can be that supportive adult. I think especially for folks in the older generation or folks coming from more traditional backgrounds, a lot of us have been taught, right, that you need to have a rigid role, that you need to have a specific identity and that those things don't change. And so then when we have young people whose identities are more fluid or, or changing, who, who don't want to identify with a particular term or category, that can be really jarring and uncomfortable for folks and can kind of blow folks' minds. And for me, the key thing to keep in mind is that young people are the experts in their own identities and experiences. And so what they are saying about their gender and their identity in each moment is what is correct. There's a couple of key steps that folks can take. The first one um, is the most emphatic one that we hear from young people in our research is using folks' correct name and pronoun. I think sometimes folks are a little hesitant to try using a new name or pronouns because they're really scared of making a mistake and hurting someone. And so their way of trying to prevent that mistake is by not using name or pronouns. But from the perspective of the trans person, that is perceived as silence. Um, and that silence can be really deflating after someone has really psyched themselves up to come out to someone. And so then when if folks, you know, fall into that silence and and don't use the name or pronouns because they're trying to avoid making mistakes, the trans person can think like, oh no, did they not hear me? Did they not understand? Are they ignoring me? Or are they not okay with this? And so that silence can really cause a lot of distress for folks um, instead of feeling like the affirmation that the other person might mean it to be. The other thing that I always tell people is if you do make a mistake, there are three quick steps. The first is to stop and apologize. The second is to correct yourself, use the correct name, use the correct pronouns. And then the third one is to move on, keep moving. Beyond that, you can also take steps to educate yourself. So there are tons and tons of really powerful educational resources. So learning a little bit more about, you know, what is gender identity? What is gender expression? What are various kinds of transgender and non-binary identities that people have and express in the world? Once you've done the education and you've sort of gotten the basics, approaching the young person and asking open-ended questions. Also respecting that they may not want to talk about it, right? And so they may say, no, I, I don't want to answer your questions and that's fine. But if they're open to talking about it, asking open-ended questions about, you know, about their identity and about how they feel, asking them, what do you need? You know, what, what does this identity mean to you? What does expressing this identity in these different spaces look like, right? You may express it one way at home and one way at school and one way in your faith community. And that is all okay. All of that, that change and that growth is, is actually very good. It shows that people are reflecting and changing and growing into themselves and we should really celebrate that. It is so, so important to realize that folks are not alone, right? It's very easy to feel alone if you are the only transgender or non-binary person that you know, but you are not alone. 